Hey, what's going on everyone? Tyler here. And if you're new to this channel, I have over 10 years experience in the field of IT and cybersecurity. And it's my mission now to teach you how you can get into the field, work remote, and make a ton of money doing so. Now today, we're gonna to be building out a home lab using VMware Workstation Pro. And it is so important to have a home lab because this is where you build your skill set so you can be successful in this field. Let's dive into VMware Workstation Pro. All right, so check it out. The first thing that you need is a hypervisor. Now I'm going to be using VMware Workstation Pro. You can download that for Windows or Linux. It's a free trial for 30 days. Or if you're on a Mac, you can download VMware Fusion 12. Again, uh, download it, it's a free trial. So once we have one of those, we'll need Windows Server 2019 if you wanna follow along with me completely and build out this home lab. Uh, it's good for 180 days. You'll wanna make sure that you download the ISO and I'll put links down below in the description for um, all of this. Okay, so I've already got Workstation Pro installed, so we're good there. You'll wanna make sure that you install that. It's pretty easy, click, 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 restart. Um, once you're there, go ahead and create a new virtual machine. We can do typical, hit next, and then we're going to want to find our ISO. Um, in this case, I'm using Windows Server 2019. So once you find your ISO, you'll open that up, and then we can click on next. And then we're gonna skip the product key because we just downloaded a trial. We'll uh, continue forward with the server data, data center core. Um, you can go ahead and personalize your login information so you can do you know your login name and your password completely optional you don't have to yet click on next and then just letting us know that hey you know uh, we don't have a product key selected and that uh, we'll have to activate windows later uh, we'll just click on yes here that's fine let's go ahead and name the virtual machine so i like to do this naming convention here, but you can name it whatever you want. And this is telling you this is where the virtual machine files will be stored. And then we'll go ahead and click on next. And then for hard drive space, you can do the, the recommended here, or you can change that. I would not have anything less than probably 30 gigs, um, just to be on the safe side of things. I'm just gonna leave it default at 60. And then I like to store my virtual disk as a single file as opposed to splitting it up. You can do whichever you want. We'll go ahead and click on next. And then we can customize the hardware. So we'll click this button here. Um, I like to give it at least four gigabytes, which is 4096 megabytes. Um, you know, that's just gonna depend on how much RAM that you have. So make sure that you're not over allocating uh, the RAM here. Otherwise, your computer is not gonna run very well. Um, processors, I, you know, default by two, that's fine for me. I have, uh, I think a six or an eight core processor in this. So we'll click on close once you're satisfied there. And then go ahead and click on finish. Okay, so now our ISO is going to go ahead and boot. And if you haven't installed Windows Server before, I would go ahead and continue to follow along with me. If not, and you know what you're doing, go ahead and skip ahead. All right, so when you get to this screen here, we have a couple different options. Now, uh, unless you select the desktop experience, you're not gonna have a GUI, which is exactly what you're seeing on my screen now. Like, this is the GUI. Um, so if you want that experience and you want to follow along with my future videos, make sure that you go ahead and do the desktop experience. I like to do the data center evaluation desktop experience. Uh, so let's go ahead and select that and then click on next. Okay, so if you do get this error message right here, what we'll do here is we're going to go ahead and power off the virtual machine. And then as you notice, we no longer see it. Um, so go ahead and click on view, customize, and library. So now I've got the virtual machine right here and we can reopen up this tab here. So in order to fix that, what happens is this floppy disk uh, gets installed. Um, I can't remember exactly what it does, but we're just gonna go ahead and remove this. And then we'll click on okay. And then once we power on the virtual machine again, we're no longer going to get that license issue. And if you do get stuck here, uh, what we can do is click on these three little boxes up here. That's for your um, Control-Alt-Delete. 
And then after you do this, make sure you click back into this window and then just click a key on your, uh, on your keyboard here. We'll click on enter here to set up Windows and it's gonna go ahead and boot back into the installer. Again, data center evaluation, desktop experience, next. And then, as you can see, we no longer get the license issue. So we'll go ahead and hit accept, sign over your soul, click on next. Uh, I'm gonna do a custom Windows install only. Click on the hard drive, click next. And then it's gonna go through and install Windows and do its thing. So we'll sync back up after this is finished. All right, so after Windows finishes installing, what you'll wanna do is set up your account. It's got the username administrator by default, and then just go ahead and give it a password. And then we'll click on finish. All right, so when we get to this screen here, we need to do control alt delete. So what we'll do is click on these three boxes up here. That's what does control alt delete in our virtual machine. We'll go ahead and type in the password that we just created and log in. All right, once everything loads up, um, we'll click on no here and cancel that if you have that and then just close out of everything. So we have Windows 2019 server installed, uh, but as you can see, if we try to resize this window, our virtual machine still stays in this tiny little box. So the way we fix that, VMware prompts you down here to install VMware tools. And that went away for me. So if that's the case, you just come up here to the VM tab and then drop down to install VMware tools. And then what this is gonna do is it tells you down here, it loads it onto another drive. So we'll click on the folder here, go to this PC, and then we'll see it right here. So if we double click into that, we're going to install VMware tools and this is going to allow us to resize our virtual machine. So we'll click on next, uh, typical is fine, hit next, hit install. And then once this is all done, we'll go ahead and restart the computer. So hit finish and then yes to a restart. All right, so once we've restarted, we've logged back into the machine. We can go ahead and minimize everything to the desktop here, and we should be able to resize our virtual machine, and it works. So we can do that. Um, if we don't wanna see the VMware GUI here, we can click on this box up here, and that takes us into full screen. If we need to get back to the GUI, just drag your mouse up the top here. You can also pin it so it always stays up there or you can unpin and then it goes away. Okay, so one feature that I really like about uh, virtual machines here is if we click on the VM tab here and we do snapshot take snapshot. So let me explain what a snapshot is. So a snapshot basically saves your VM in the current state that it's in. So then let's say that you install some software or maybe you play around with some malware and it just screws up the virtual machine. Rather than having to go back and reinstall the virtual machine completely, what we can do is we can just revert to a previous snapshot. And it's as if nothing that we did had even occurred. So I always like to do one after the, the initial install and after the VMware tools. So I'm gonna name this here, uh, initial install and VMware tools. You can name it whatever you want, but we'll go ahead and take this snapshot. Well, let's go ahead and just for a proof of concept here, I'm gonna create a bunch of files on the desktop. All right, so all this stuff is on the desktop here. Now we can go up to VMware or click on the VM tab, I should say, and then we can go to screenshot and we can go ahead and revert it to the last screenshot that we took which is right here so or we can select one down here if we have multiple snapshots so i'm going to go ahead and click on revert and click on yes and it's going to let you know that the current state will be lost so everything on this desktop will be lost we'll go ahead and click on yes it'll take a minute here and reload the virtual machine to the previous state so as you can see, all three of those files that we had created are now off the desktop, and that's because we've reverted back the VM to a previous state. So it's always good practice if you're going to make a major change to just take a snapshot prior to that change in case that change messes everything up. Then you can revert back and it's as if that change never happened. Uh, just, you know, good practice, and then you don't have to reinstall the entire Windows operating system again. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more videos that help you build your skill set to succeed in the field of IT and cybersecurity.